production possibility curve. So this is a very important concept. You must expect at least uh, a couple of MCQs and definitely a, a structured question on this. So what is a production possibility curve? It is a curve which will show you all possible combinations of output that you can produce of two goods within your given budget or your given set of resources. This is the definition. Please be sure to write it down. It is really, really important. So to make you understand this, I'm just going to start off with a simple example. And um, let's assume that you have a thousand rupees. So this is the resource that you have. And then let's say you want to decide between buying books or buying DVDs. So let's say if a book costs rupees uh, 200 and a DVD costs rupees 100. So if you decide to buy more books, you will obviously have to let go of some DVDs. And if you decide to buy more DVDs, you will obviously have to let go of some books. So essentially what I'm trying to make you understand is that you will be incurring an opportunity cost. And this is exactly what happens to businesses as well. When they decide to make more of one product, they then have to maybe let go of another product. So what does a production possibility curve show you? Again, let's just go through the definition. A production possibility curve is a curve which shows various combinations of the amounts of two goods that can be produced within the given resources. So, and it also shows you that every time you make a decision and every time you decide to make more of one good, you will incur an opportunity cost and you will have to let go of some of the other good. So in this case, in this example, when you're buying more books, then you will have to let go of some DVDs and vice versa. Uh, before focusing on what you can see on the screen right now, please try and bear with me for a minute and just focus on what I'm saying. So when you draw a production possibility curve, you will basically, it obviously you have to decide between two products. So let's say in X amount of resources, in this particular example, we are deciding between cars and trucks. So in, uh, in the resource amount that we don't know, let's say the maximum cars that you can produce when you make zero trucks is 100. And uh, if you make zero cars, the maximum trucks that you can produce is 120. Now, when I'm to plot this on a graph, what I will do is that I'm to put cars on one axis, let, over here it's on the Y axis, and uh, trucks on the X axis. So the maximum number of cars that I can possibly make, I will plot and mark 100, as you can see the purple dot over here. And the maximum trucks I can produce when, I can, when I'm not making any cars is 120. So I plot that here. And when I join the two together, there is our production possibility curve. Okay, so my line is probably not as neat, but you get the drift. So this is how you essentially construct a production possibility curve. Now, let's just talk about what this curve tells you. So the first thing that you should focus on is that it has a negative slope. So what do I mean when I say that something has a negative slope? When something has a negative slope, and, or when a, I'm sorry, not something, when a curve has a negative slope, it means that both it ac its axes will have an inverse relationship. Meaning, as let's say the x axis go up, y will go down. And this is essentially what is meant by a negative slope. So, what that means is that when you decide to make more cars, you will, you will be making less trucks. And when you decide to make more, uh, make more trucks, you will be making less cars. So make sure and you, uh, that you note down that the production possibility curve has a negative slope, which basically shows us that we are incurring an opportunity cost. So if I'm to um, plot a dot over here um, and one over here, So when I move from point A to point B, I am now producing less number of cars and that you can tell by this fall. 
over here and when I move from point A to D, so over here, I am now making more trucks. So what did I, what happened? Because I decided to uh, make less cars when I moved from point A to D, I'm now able to make more trucks because from point A to D, you can see that this point will be smaller in value compared to this point. I hope this makes sense to you. Okay, we're now going to talk about the significance of production points inside the curve. Before we do that, I would just want you to remember to always label your graphs properly. And if you don't do that in your exam, you can expect to not get full marks on that particular diagram. So when you're uh, drawing a production possibility curve, you will obviously, be, since you have to choose between two products, so one of the products is going to be on your y-axis and the other one is going to be on your x-axis. So over here, when we study any point inside your um, production possibility curve, what does it mean? It means that you are now not producing up to your maximum capacity because this yellow line that you see, this production possibility curve that you can see, it is basically the maximum you can, the different combinations of the maximum output you can produce within your given resources. So when you're at a point inside, like over here, when you're at this point H, when you're at a point inside this curve, that basically means that you have a potential to produce a lot more, but you are producing a lot less. Maybe you're being inefficient or maybe you're not using everything that you have. Maybe you're not using all your resources that you have. So point H, the thing to remember here and very important is that any point inside your production possibility curves that you are not using your resources properly and you have the capacity to produce a lot more, but you're not. Um, you, I'm telling you again, I mean this, I'm pretty sure is tarah ke maine millions of MCQs dekhe hai hai. not actually millions, but you get the drift. Significance of production points outside the curve. Just tarah inside the curve meant that you were not producing up to your maximum capacity. So outside, now this point F will basically means that you are now trying to produce or now trying to aim to produce at a point which is not possible within your given budget. So, jaise aapko mene shuru mein bataya tha before we started, like in this particular example, aap maximum 100 cars bana sakte hain, maximum 120 trucks bana sakte hain. Isse zyada aap nahi bana sakte. Aapke paas jitna budget hai, within this budget, you can't make 150 cars when you're making no trucks. And you can't make 200 trucks when you're making no cars because you have already drawn your production possibility curve, keeping your particular budget in mind. So any point outside the curve is going to be an unattainable point. I hope that all of you are taking notes and especially focusing on everything that I'm underlining. This is really important. So what do points on the production possibility curve you so there's one point that you can see right now it is now this point is basically the maximum you can produce within your given budget and the maximum uh, yeah and your that means that you're completely efficient efficient you're using all your resources very properly and you're uh, producing to your maximum uh, capacity now Another thing that I would like to um, just bring to your attention is that if I just make different points, like these purple dots that you can see, all of these points are basically just different combinations of output that you can produce within this budget. And all of these points show that your products are being produced efficiently and you're producing to your maximum capability. Movement along the curve. I already showed you an illustration of this when, we have, when I was talking to you about how the PPC has a negative slope or the axes have an inverse relationship. Look at this diagram. I just, let's just understand what this diagram is showing us. So there are two points, point C and D. C and D. So let's just look at what combinations of cars and trucks are being made at this, at these two points. So at point C, 60 cars are being made. 
while 80 trucks are being made. And then at point D, 50 cars are being made and 98 trucks. So now we want to study the movement from D to C, from point D to C. What, just by looking at this data, what do you think has happened? So in, it shows you that in order to make 10 more cars, in order to you have uh, you had to let go of 18 trucks. So in order to make 60 cars, you then had you then could only make 80 trucks. While at point D, you were making 98 trucks, uh, trucks, but you were making only 50 cars. So in order to make more of cars, you had to let go of some trucks. And this is what movement along the curve is showing us. That means we are incurring an opportunity cost every time we move along the production possibility curve. It shows us how we will be incurring an opportunity cost. Shifts in the PPC curve. So what are shifts? A shift is when an entire PPC curve moves. So if you just look at this uh, diagram over here. Uh, it shows you three lines in three different colors. So the yellow line is supposed to represent the original PPC. So when your PPC shifts towards your right hand, that basically means that your PPC has increased and that means that your resources have now increased and you have the capacity to make more cars and more trucks. And if your PVC is to shift inwards and that shift inwards is being represented by the red line on the screen over here, this one. So this shows that your resources have now decreased and now you have a lower capacity to produce cars and trucks. Every time your PPC shifts outwards or inwards, it is basically showing you that you either have more resources to make more goods and services or you have less resources to make less goods and services. Um, please take a look at the screen. Outward shifts in the PPC means that the economy is growing and that there is an increase in the production potential, while an inward shift means that the production potential is shrinking. Now, it is for you to think and interpret every time you get a question, ke kab PPC increase hoti hai, kab PPC decrease hoti hai. So, if your, if your economy, let's say, um, discovers a, a natural resource, to kya hoga? That means ke aapke paas resources jitni hai, wo bar gai hai, and now your PPC of, the PPC of your country is going to shift outwards. Similarly, if God forbid your country is hit by a really, let's say, uh, a, a really bad earthquake, or in the current cases like coronavirus, you can see that it has really impacted business activity and it has really shut down a lot of businesses and people aren't able to produce as much as they were. And in this case, your PPC is going to shift inwards, signifying that your production potential has now shrunk or decreased. A number of economies are devoting more of their resources to the provision of health care due to the economic problem this involves them having to make difficult choices. So part A is what is the economic problem? Simple enough, you define it and you score two marks. Part B, using a production possibility curve diagram, explain why choices have to be made as to how to allocate resources. Now, um, to illustrate this, now obviously they've specified ki aapne diagram banani hai. It's a six mark question. They've used the word explain. That means that you should be explaining well. So what will you do? You will make a diagram, PPC, and since they've already mentioned uh, healthcare, so let's say you label healthcare on one of the axes and maybe education on the other axis, draw a production possibility curve. So now what they've asked you to explain is why choices have to be made as to how resources are to, are to be allocated. So you can illustrate that by movement along your production possibility curve. So 
this example will show you that in, a, in order to spend more on healthcare, you'll have to take away money from other um, um, sectors, but let's say education being one of them in this case. So you need to make sure that you draw uh, and label your graph correctly and you need to explain why choices have to be made as in make a clear and um, explanation for all of this and that should score you six marks. I repeat, if you do not label your graph properly, you will not be given marks for that. The unemployment rate in Wales fell from 8.2% in March 2013 to 6.8% in March 2014. One in four workers in Wales is employed in the public sector. A high proportion of workers are employed in multinational companies, including a Japanese car producer and a South Korean electronics firm. Using a production possibility curve diagram, analyze the effect of a decrease in unemployment on an economy's output. So in this case, what do you think will happen? So firstly, let's just draw a production possibility curve for an economy. Okay, so if analyze the effect of a decrease in unemployment. So what they're trying to say is that now um, people are now getting more jobs in your country and unemployment has decreased. So that essentially tells you that may, the, if all the uh, when all of your factors of productions are not being used effectively, that means that some of them are just sitting idle. So if there's unemployment, that means there's labor in your country, but you're not using that labor to its maximum capacity. So that shows you that the point that you were definitely in was inside the curve because you were not producing to your maximum potential. So therefore you were inside the curve. So now if there's a decrease in unemployment, and we don't know since they haven't really specified if it's maximum uh, employment in your country or not. So we can safely assume that the new point is going to be somewhere closer to the PPC. Let's say this is point A and this is point B. So the movement will be from point A to B, you will be moving and you should, you should draw this diagram and then be explaining why the, the movement will be from point A to B. It's because now you are employing more people and therefore your production is increasing and we don't, since they haven't really told us if there is maximum employment in the country, therefore we don't have to necessarily move to, the, to a point on the PPC. I hope you've understood this. I again want to stress on labeling the graph correctly and making sure that you provide an explanation for the, for the graph that you draw to gain full marks.